We weren't going to talk about the Labour anti-Semitism row on today's show, but there was an article in the Sunday Times I do think it is worth talking about. It was a profile by Rosamond Irwin of the ex-Labour MP Luciana Berger. So the article started by recounting some of the awful online abuse Berger has been subjected to. We can go to a section in the piece. So it says, the former MP of Liverpool, Wavertree, who had joined the party as a student and was in effect hounded out of it by anti-Semitism, received a message online threatening that she would pay for the suspension of the former leader, Jeremy Corbyn. Now, while my politics and, and Luciana Burgess is, is, is completely different, one thing that's undeniable is that she has been subjected to lots of abuse, lots of awful abuse, some of it from the right, some of it from the left, and you should not be, you know, I'm sure our audience aren't, but no one should be saying that an MP is going to pay um, for the suspension of Jeremy Corbyn, clearly very threatening language. Um, the next line from the piece is interesting, though, um, because it concerns us. During a live chat session run by the Corbyn sympathising Navarra media, anonymous commentators dubbed her a vile fifth columnist and the face of evil. Now, much like those, those first comments that I showed you, these again are, are completely unacceptable. You shouldn't be referring to, to Jewish people as part of a fifth column, um, clearly sort of talking about dual loyalties and it's, it's just, it's, it's not good. It makes people uncomfortable and it does for a reason because it's very adjacent to sort of far-right anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Not good. Um, obviously, we do our best to, to block these kind of comments when they do appear under our videos. We have moderators, many of you volunteers. Thank you so much for the work you do. Um, but I have a few problems with the way this has been reported. So yes, they showed us a screenshot. Those, those, those messages did appear under our video. We don't have a live chat session. This isn't a live chat session. That's what Rosamond Irwin called it. She's apparently the, the media and technology correspondent for The Times, and she thinks that Tisky Sauer is a live chat session. She clearly didn't watch it, otherwise she would know that this is a program, a broadcast with a live chat box. And by the way, I love, I, I love nearly, I love 99% of the chat you put in that live chat box. I don't want you to be tarred by these, by these two comments that have been pointed out here. Further, we had an audience of 7,000 live viewers that night, and these two comments are, are somehow meant to imply that all of our audience is anti-Semitic. You might say, oh, that's a bit of a reach. She, she hasn't said that there. Um, what she's just said is that this is where these comments appeared against Luciana Berger. Berger, apologies. Um, but again, why is it Navarra that it has appeared? Why is it Navarra and not LBC, not talk radio? If you have seen any live stream on this channel, on this, on this platform, sorry, on YouTube, there are always going to be hundreds of comments every second. And I'll tell you, if you look at LBC, if you look at Talk Radio, they're a hell of a lot worse than us because I'm very defensive about our Tisky Sour audience. Most of you, progressive, anti-racist, brilliant people, um, which is not what you can say always under a, well, not what you could say under a Nigel Farage LBC live stream. Um, but Rosamond Irwin doesn't seem to understand this. She doesn't know this. She's blaming us for comments on a live stream. Now, I pointed this out to Rosamond Irwin because I thought it was rather unfair for Navarra to appear in this article. It's clear the implication she was trying to make. Um, this was her response to me on Twitter. Except those weren't the only two, were they? And I'm sure you know that. We don't allow comments like that on our site. What do you do to stop anti-Semitic abuse? From this very polite exchange I had with Rosamond Irwin. It was never abusive. I was just saying, I think the way you've represented a show I hosted in your newspaper was, was not very fair. Um, she's blocked me. Um, so I can't speak directly to her on Twitter. But if you are watching, Rosamond, I'm sure you weren't watching that previous show and you just got a screenshot sent to you by someone who hates Navarro Media. But anyway, if you are watching, this is what we do. Um, so as you've said, we don't have comments on our website. I mean, if we did, we'd have to have a different policy there. This is all on YouTube. But even on YouTube, unlike, say, LBC, we don't leave live comments up after the stream. That's because it is too hard to moderate. Basically, there are too many of them. And also, we do try and moderate our, our, our posts, which, again, is way more than LBC and Talk Radio do, which you've never included in your articles because you have no interest in, in casting them as associated with racism in the same way that you do crowdfunded organizations on the progressive left. Why is that? You can make your own decision. To show how common it is for unpleasant, unsavory comments to appear on any live stream that she hasn't decided to write about, I looked at an LBC stream, and it was just a randomly selected one. It was the most recent one that day, hosted by Tom Swarbrick, kind of a centrist analysis. I think, uh, analyst, apologies. He used to work for Theresa May, so it's not like their most far-right show. Um, and these are what I found. So this is just from that morning 
on YouTube on LBC. And again, if I suppose I should give you sort of a content warning, there's going to be quite a lot of racism in these, all quite unpleasant stuff. Um, so this is all from LBC yesterday morning. Patriotic Alternative have a longer report on their website, so telling people go search this far-right group um, about some sort of trumped-up terrorist attack, I think. Then we've got, your government is implementing the clergy plan on behalf of the government overlords in occupied Palestine. Now, I don't know what that plan is supposed to be, but this is clearly a very deep rabbit hole, deeply anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Um, then we've got swamp armies all in place as Europe locked down, coincidence, all time to USA election, which they get the go signal. This idea of the go signal is like real. This is, this is deep far right conspiracy. And then you've got someone saying, okay, Jew. Um, it's not even, that's just, he's, he's just being out and out very explicit there. Now, when I showed this to Rosamond Irwin, she said, this is a V odd argument that LBC attracts racist comments doesn't make it any better that yours did too. And who would I be interviewing to use the comments you point out? What you're writing doesn't even make any sense. Now, granted, she was writing a piece about Luciana Berger. If she was writing one about anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, maybe she'd go to those sites. But that's not really what her first reply to me suggested. And again, I'm not an idiot. I know why the Sunday Times are including Navarra Media in an article about Labour anti-Semitism, because they want to tar us with that brush. They want to associate us with racism. That's what they do. The problem here is that she doesn't have a leg to stand on. Before going to this, I want to remind you of... Um, what she said. So her first reply to me saying, I think this is a bit unfair. You've included our channel and my show in, in this way in the Sunday paper, which you know, goes out to hundreds of thousands of people. So she wrote in response to that, except those weren't the only two, were they? And I'm sure you know that we don't allow comments like that on our site. Now, let's go to a video which is on the Sunday Times YouTube site. So it's about Black Lives Matter. If you look at the content, she's sort of critiquing Black Lives Matter. Under that video in the comments, you can see. Indigenous British lives matter. For 70 years, we have tolerated the destruction of our homeland and attacks on our people. No more. Tolerance is over. Mass repatriation, repatriation or war. That's really grim stuff. We don't allow comments like that on our site. Um, well, you were judging us for comments which were on our YouTube, and those are comments which are on your <laughs> YouTube, so you do not have a leg to stand on. Let's get up another one. And again, I'm, I'm sorry I'm showing you all of this racism, but this is just to point out the hypocrisy of this Sunday Times journalist. So this is also under that same Sunday Times video. So it's uh, Jeff T writes, the trouble with the black and ethnic communities is they have a bloody big chip on their shoulders. They need to realize they are the minority in a white country and always will be. The sooner they conform to the British way of life and culture, the sooner they will be accepted as equals. The only thing they are doing is making a rod for their own backs and will continue. I don't even want to read the whole of it. Really horrible, far right ugh, drivel. Um, and that has been on the Sunday Times YouTube site for four months. Now, the comments which she decided to include in her profile to the, the hundreds of thousands of people who buy the Sunday Times um, had, had stayed on our site for, I think, like an hour. Um, and this has been on her YouTube channel or the Sunday Times YouTube channel for four months. Um, and we can also look at a few more comments that have appeared not in the YouTube channel, which even though she's tech and media correspondent, she doesn't seem to understand that there is a distinction between someone's website and someone's YouTube channel. But these are... These are on the website. These are on the, on the website proper. Um, so a few of them. Islamophobia is a fiction to shut down debate. Legitimate criticism of Muslim teaching can't be compared to anti-Semitic demonization and lies. I'm identifying as a young black trans chihuahua and the truth can go whistle. I mean, from reading the tweet that Rosamond Irwin sent me, I'd have thought those would have been deleted from the Times website if you had any kind of half-decent moderation. But no, um, instead of these comments being deleted by a moderator, they were made into headlines because this is what the Sunday Times pays their authors to write. Okay? So, uh, so what you're seeing here is a situation which we have seen again and again and again in this country over the last four years, which is you've got people who work for a deeply structurally racist organization who literally hire people to write headlines saying Islamophobia doesn't exist. Um, Rod Liddell is, is hired by the Sunday Times in The Spectator, his, his other outlet. He has said that there isn't enough Islamophobia in the Conservative Party. They are using the, the flimsiest evidence, the flimsiest evidence, two comments in a live feed where you've got hundreds of comments a minute to suggest that a left-wing channel 
anti-racist channel watched by, and again, I'm, I, I'm really, I think this is a really important point because what people try and do is they try and use two comments to tar a whole brush. And I'm just, I'm just not saying we can't take responsibility for our audience. I'm saying our audience is brilliant, right? There are thousands of you and you're really brilliant people. There are a couple of people who, who, who write dumb shit. We block them from the site if, if they do that, especially if it's racist. Um, we 100% we make sure they can't comment again. But the idea that this should tar our whole audience, I hate it, and especially from someone who basically works in, in a racism factory. You know, in the building where the Times is, you've also got talk radio, you've also got the Sun. These are some of the outlets which spout the most racist drivel from their best paid journalists. This is not just about comments, this is about structurally what that organization does. Probably, and this is probably the most significant and, and appalling um, sort of instance of inciting racial hatred um, from the Times, is something that appeared not in the comments section, not in the op-ed section, but on the front page. So you've got Christian child forced into Muslim foster care. Um, now, this sparked you know, a huge row. It was like, oh, how's, how's political correctness gone so mad that you're forcing Christian children into Muslim foster care? It's sort of playing into all the, the, the worst tropes that come from sort of far-right anti-Semitic conspiracy theory, which is you know, young white children being forced into brown. It's, it's really grim. A complaint was made about this, which was upheld because that front page, and again, this wasn't a comment section, this wasn't in the office, that was a front page, was fundamentally wrong. Ipsos upheld a complaint because the fact of the matter was the child was at least as Muslim as she was Christian. She was baptized, but she had regularly attended church in the care of her practicing Muslim grandparents. Um, the family, again, was a divided family um, in terms of that they weren't all Muslim. I mean, the, the whole story completely fell apart. It was on the front page of the Times, and now a Times journalist is saying these comments would not appear in our paper and trying to smear an anti-racist left-wing organization, which is, by the way, funded on a shoestring. I mean, if the Times want moderators, they can pay for them. Trying to, in this really self-righteous way on Twitter, suggest that we're associated with racism. I can't stand it. I mean, Michael, I think you've put it better than I ever could have. This is clearly a bad faith attack. We put a lot of effort into moderating our comments. It's a sad and unfortunate truth that some will slip through the net. And when they do, we'll do our best to make sure those commenters can't comment again. Um, I really appreciate and adore the commenting community that we've got for Tisky Sour. I think it's one of the most impassioned and intelligent audiences you could hope to have as a media organization. And so I think it's absolutely outrageous that thousands of viewer, viewers are being tarnished with this brush. But the thing that I would like to say actually is not to you and it's not to our audience, it's to Rosamond Irwin herself, because Rosamond, you've blocked Aaron Bastani, you've blocked Michael Walker, but as far as I can tell, you haven't blocked me yet. And I've got no reason to think that you don't take racism very seriously. And as we've laid out in this show, there are racist comments, below the line on the Times and Sunday Times YouTube channel. They've stayed up there for months. Some comments as ugly as advocating for mass repatriation or a race war. And we've also highlighted a pattern of coverage, which is either explicitly racist and denigrating of black people, of Muslims and ethnic minorities, or also just misleading, dishonest journalism. So I can only assume from the way in which you tweeted my colleague Michael Walker that you are either shockingly ignorant of the organization of which you work for or this is a bad faith attack and you're holding the VARA media to standards which no other media organization could be held to or perhaps you hold to a hierarchy of racism where you don't consider racism against black people and against Muslims to be as serious as anti-Semitism. Now, I really hope it's not the latter. So here's my question for you. Given we found a lot more than two comments on a single live stream highlighting a pattern of racist comments on the Sunday Times and Times YouTube channel and also a pattern of racist commentary in the publication proper, what are you doing to stop racism within your organization? My patiently wait for your answer. Her answer is, is going to be nothing. What I'm doing is I'm busy distracting from the racism of my own organization by throwing stones at anti-racist progressive organizations who aren't funded by xenophobic billionaires. 
um, who aren't, you know, who, who haven't spent um, decades stoking hatred against Muslims and trans people and put on their front pages scare stories which aren't actually true about white kids being forced into brown families, you know? In a way, it feeds back to the, the Labour issue because whilst, as we've always said, there were some real anti-Semites in the Labour Party and, and more than there were some real anti-Semites, there was some sort of um, ways of speaking that made Jews rightly uncomfortable um, and you know there could have been a bit more leadership from, from the top on it. But the purpose of making it out as if the Labour Party was the home of racism in this country was to absolutely distract from the, the powerful institutions in this country who don't just have a few members who tweet things on Twitter, but who are literally owned and controlled by people who are willing to put lies on their front pages to incite hatred against powerless people who have either recently arrived in this country because they are um, coming from a, from a war zone, who they're saying, oh, this is disgusting. Why can't they live in France? These people are criminals, giving huge platforms to Nigel Farage, who's going around beaches, sort of harassing people coming over in dinghies, harassing, you know, in a metaphorical sense of his cam. I don't want to make any particular allegations about what he's done on the ground. Um, but the, the, the fact that the purpose of these organizations and the way they make money is to stoke racial hatred. And then to say that actually, no, racism in Britain, the biggest problem um, is what people have written on Facebook and Twitter who are part of the anti-racist left-wing party. And then you get people on Twitter who sort of say, oh no, but it's a bigger, de it's a bigger deal um, when it's from the left because you're supposed to be anti-racist. So we're gonna hold you to impossibly high standards because you're left-wing, if there is a single racist comment on your YouTube channel that undermines your whole argument, that undermines the whole point of your being. And I say to them, look, we do hold ourselves to a higher standard, but if you are trying to make us commit to this sort of weird ass double standard that you don't apply to anyone else and you know is impossible to meet, we're not gonna do that because we would fail that and then you'd hold it against us, right? So let's be realistic about this and let's call out people who are only attacking us in bad faith. I mean, I think part of the way in which uh, anti-Semitism has been used to discredit the entirety of the left is to be, it, the intention is to rob us of the ability to talk about racism at all. Exactly. Now, like you said, it is true that there are anti-Semites within the Labour Party, there are anti-Semites on the left, and more than that, there was also this broader uh, lack of sensitivity and kindness, right, and a failure in leadership uh, from the top of the Labour Party, didn't deal with it as quickly as it should have. And I think that we can all, all agree on that. We might differ on what some specific policy responses should have been, but that's definitely true. The most fervent attackers of the left from the right-wing papers and the right-wing media in general do not take racism seriously. They don't take anti-Semitism seriously. So you've got the same people who are pushing this kind of, you know, George Soros conspiracy theory from the front page of the Telegraph, for instance, right? That was Nick Timothy. Uh, you know, Rupert Murdoch, who has talked about the Jewish-owned press, that these are somehow people who get a free pass because they're not associated with the left and they're not associated with the anti-imperialist left in particular. And I don't think that this is something that we talk about enough, is that part of the reason why there is this selective outrage with regards to anti-Semitism and perhaps a heightened sensitivity when it comes from the left or is perceived to come from, from the left is in part so that you can no longer talk about the way in which Islamophobia has shaped decades of state policy, both domestically and overseas, and to rid the left of its moral authority when it comes to structural and institutional discrimination. And that is a huge part of this story. Now, the challenge for the left, and I'm going to talk about the challenge facing the left because we do have a responsibility uh, to make something better, to do something better, is to try and revive those bonds of anti-racist solidarity, which have historically existed between Jewish communities and other communities of colour within a shared anti-racist movement. And I think it's going to be really difficult. And I think it's been made more challenging in particular because of this, you know, a heightened, uh, you know, very partisan uh, conflict with regards to anti-Semitism. But that's the challenge that's facing us because the rising tide of white nationalism 
uh, it endangers all of us. It endangers Jewish people, it endangers Muslims, it endangers black people, it presents a threat to trans people, to you know people who aren't straight. And so you really do have to have a kind of shared movement and shared language to deal with that. And that is precisely what this particular form of weaponization is designed to impede. Mm-hmm.